Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Lucium Total War update video. In this video, I am going to be showing off all of the new faction's positionings, and the finalized Khalidi roster, which has gotten its nice new unit cards thanks to Azimufaza. So let's get into it. Now if we come back to our menu, you can see we have filled out the uh, mini roster a little bit. We've got the Barbary States, Wallachia Moldavia, the State of Iraq, the Kazakh Khanate, and that's what else could you want? I mean, we've got the Khalid. They're great. But continuing on, uh, just to get some stuff out of the way, we have added a formable Scandinavia as well as a Hungarian Revolution. Uh, those are not on the map at the start, however, Scandinavia can be formed, and the Hungarian Revolution will be an early challenge for Austria. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> you cannot click too many times on this menu, or it will crash you to desktop. This is a pretty similar problem with a lot of mods, however, we found a solution to it, but that is not in this version, so just know for the finalized product, you can click as many times as you want on this menu without it crashing. However, for the sake of brevity, and to not have to relaunch the game, I am going to click once on the Khalid, who have been fully implemented at this point. This image will still be changed, of course, but let's get into it. So, as you can see, the Khalidi have been fully implemented. We have all of their units, such as Royal Saber Warriors, Arab Home Guard Militia, Islamic Fusiliers, and more, of course. And we have some forts positioned around with their Bedouin units. So, as you can see, they are fully done. This is going to be the starting position for the Khalid. Uh, they start off pretty poor, but that is to be expected when you live in a desert. If we come up a little north, we are welcomed to the beautiful state of Iraq. Uh, now, Iraq does not have its roster in yet, and most of these factions we're going to see don't have their rosters in. Now, you might notice something. Iraq doesn't start with Baghdad. Ah, uh, there's a bit of a schism in the dev team. But hey, 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 it's fine, it's fine, you know? We're working on it. There's going to be a script involving Iraq, uh, involving the Ottomans and Persians, and debating over who gets Iraq and money, and it's going to be a fun little interactive script that you're going to be able to use in your campaign, so it should hopefully add some interest to the region. But as you can see, we have our nice Iraqi flag. Iraq, of course, does not have its units in yet, but they will be added soon. Coming over to the right, I welcome you to the great Kazakh Khanate, and their capital of Turkestan, which is right up against the map. Uh, so Kazakhstan is big. It's empty. And that about sums Kazakhstan up. Now, one thing I will say is for Russia and Kazakhstan, they are getting a special ancillary trait added to their generals, uh, which will allow them to move faster, so it'll give them extra movement points. We felt this was necessary as it just was not fun to play over here in Russia, uh, because it's big, and Kazakhstan, uh, because there's just so much empty space. So Kazakhstan and Russia will have boosted movement stats. This might be a bit of an issue when it comes to Central Europe, if they ever invaded that far, but frankly we feel like for Russia and Kazakhstan, it is ideal that they be able to move faster around. Continuing over to the Balkans, we welcome you to Wallachia Moldavia, or as the dev team calls it, Wall Mold. <laughs> Wallachia Moldavia is in a very interesting position at the start, uh, being sandwiched between three pretty important powers, the Ottomans, the Austrians, and the Polish-Lithuanians. So they're going to have a very tough start, and if they can manage to assert their uh, sovereignty, they might not still be safe, because they still will be constantly bombarded by all sides. Moving to the Barbary Coast, you can see the glorious Barbary states, who don't have a working uh, image right now, but that we promise that'll be fixed. And as you can see, we have removed Susa. That is why there is a big rebel blob up there in Finland, just trying to make that area a lot more playable. Uh, two regions are being added to the Russia-Finland area, that way there is more interest, so the AI actually works. However, that has not been done yet, and it's probably very unprofessional to have started developing it and then immediately leave it to go record a video. But you win some, you lose some. But as you can see, the Barbary states start pretty divided uh, because they were not just one unified region, they were a collective of pretty much Barbary states ruled over by the Ottomans as a protectorate, but we're just going to make them one faction because we don't have that many faction slots. They will have some unique boats, I think I've talked about this in the past. They'll have a good mix of cheap boats and some mid-tier powerful ones, however they won't be able to match the might of a late-game European and Middle Eastern navy. Welcome to Hungary. So the Hungarian Revolution was a real event that took place in 1707. I believe if I'm getting that correct. I have not fact-checked that. I'm just talking out of my head. But it's it's somewhere in the 1710s, give or take. All right, you know what? I'll give you a good day. 1705 to 1720 definitely happened between then. Don't at me. Basically, a number of scripts will fire that will allow the Hungarians to rise up and fight with the Austrian Empire. This should provide a nice early game challenge to the Austrians, and 
potentially add another nation into Central Europe. However, uh, they will not be playable. And finally to Scandinavia, so Scandinavia is fairly self-explanatory. If you conquer all of the Scandinavian region, you will be able to form Scandinavia, which pretty much just gives you a new flag, so congrats, you can form Scandinavia. Now, I actually lied earlier at the beginning of this update video. Two factions have fully implemented rosters, that being the Khalidi Emirate and the Hungarian Revolt. So, we're going to take a look at both of those. As you can see here, we have the Kingdom of Hungary and the Khalidi Emirate. Now, we already went over the Khalidi roster earlier, but this will show you the unit cards they have. So, as you can see, these have been done by Hazimufaza himself and the unit info cards by Frozen Stag. Now, you may notice that Hungary has a very small roster. Uh, this is due to the fact that they're a revolutionary, non-playable nation, so they're not expected to survive, and if they do, they've got the basic units that they need to form a nation. And welcome to the battle! So, as you can see, we're starting off our roster with a lovely Conscripted Revolutionary unit. I promise it's not Croatian halberdiers from the base game. I promise, I promise, I promise. Moving on to our standard Eastern Light Pikemen. Uh, what more to say about them, they're Eastern Light Pikemen. And then we have our Royal Hungarian Guard. Now they are a bit lower in the tiers than the uh, upcoming units, even though it might not make as much sense. Uh, it's because their number are bigger. So, th that's your explanation. And at the same time, a lot of these royal units wouldn't actually see frontline combat. They were more just decorative, used to protect or even just show off power to another monarch. So these guys, while they look nice, they aren't always the best. <laughs> and now coming on, we have our conscripted revolutionaries, our revolutionary volunteers. These guys are going to make up the bulk of the revolutionary force, and as you see, they are pretty much farmers dragged from their homes for war. And then moving on to our Hungarian Riflemen. Uh, this is a unit they also share with Austria. Uh, it's a pretty good unit. It's a standard 1800s unit. So, Napoleonic era. And continuing on, we have our Hungarian Grand Hussars, another nice unit. And then our Hungarian Staff Cavalry, even further this way. And then we have our Mounted Musketeers, Mounted Pistoliers, and European Dragoons. And of course, this is pretty standard. Every faction has these. Uh, one thing I don't think I've mentioned in the past, though, is that our Mounted, mounted Pistoliers actually have... Something resembling a pistol now, rather than a full arquebus, which they used to. But uh, yes, they have a little closer to a pistol. It does look like a slightly longer blunderbuss, but it is a pistol. And then of course we have our standard cannons, so Renaissance, 6-pounder, 12-pounder, and 24-pounder. Now, uh, they, don't, they haven't been textured yet, which is why they, they are the Silver Surfer model, so nothing to be concerned about. That's pretty standard. Haha, <laughs> conscripted revolutionary go brrrr. 